If you guys want to learn how to make sure that this edge is nice and sharp, stay tuned and I'll show you how. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I am finally going to get out into the woods uh, about next week. So I'm actually packing up, trying to get things situated for that, deciding what I want to take, what I want to want to leave behind. And uh, on this next adventure, I'm uh, going to bring an axe with me. I don't even know if I'll need it, but I have the luxury of not needing to worry about weight for this next adventure. So I'm going to take an axe with me. And one of the things uh, I always have to do is make sure my axe is nice and sharp. Sharp axe is going to be an effective tool. It's going to be a safer tool. Um, so I want to show you guys how to do that because when I first uh, started looking into axes and trying to learn how this all worked, um, I did some research and ultimately it led me to a uh, another YouTuber, uh, Wrangler Star, who's very popular. He's got like a million subscribers or something like that, but one of his most popular videos is how to sharpen an axe and I watched it I learned a little bit about it and ultimately what I found out is that he wasn't right quite on the mark in my opinion so first I'm going to go over how the axe works and how the edge works and then we'll go over how we can get that edge and make sure that it's uh, uh, the way that we want the most effective way All right, guys, so <clears throat> here's some of the grinds that I know. Um, main, most of these are for knives. Uh, and then one in particular, the convex, we'll, we'll go over, which is most axes. So you've got different grinds depending on what you're trying to do with the, um, with the tool. So the hollow grind is, is usually the most sharpest. It's usually a, a very thin knife, and it, it goes to a point really quite quickly. Uh, they're usually smaller and they're usually the sharpest, um, but they have a very weak point. This point will break down quite quickly. The next one I have here is the flat grind, and the flat grind is very similar to the Scandi grind, which we'll go over, but basically it just starts off with a knife edge where the entire part of it goes down all in one flat um, I guess a, the best way is uh, uh, it takes the same angle the whole way down uh, the edge. And then there's the saber grind, which is one of my preferred ones for knives, uh, where it's got quite a strong back to it. And then it has a bevel that starts, uh, you know, usually about midpoint down the knife. And then it's got this uh, micro bevel, or a little bit bigger than a micro bevel, right here. And this will uh, basically go into a very sharp point right, right at this point right here. So that allows you to have an easy sharpening point, but then also have uh, some of the advantages of, of a Scandi grind, um, which, which is basically that you can use it for more, more than just, uh, you know, it's stronger than the flat, and, a, and the point is a lot stronger than the hollow, but it's about as sharp as you can get with that micro bevel there. Um, so that's a really good one. And then finally, the one that I really want to go over is this convex one. The convex one is really what you're going to find in a lot of these axes. And what it does is, is it, it starts off getting gradually smaller, but then once it gets to the point, you've got this curve and it, it curves down it doesn't just take an angle sharp all the way down. It takes a curve all the way down. And what that does is it makes this entire point right here real strong. It, it's not going to chip easy. Um, it's got a lot, a lot more strength in the actual edge itself, so it won't break down as quick. And that's really important when you're um, trying to take down trees and, and do a lot with it. It's the, you know, a knife you have to sharpen more often if you want that razor sharp knife to stay that way because it's a weaker edge, especially if you're doing a flat or a Scandi grind. Now, the Scandi grind, like I said, is very similar to the flat, but it's got a strong backing. So this 
takes the whole way down at the same angle. This one stays real strong on the back, but then you'll have the same angle for quite a while. The problem with the Scandi grind that I find is that for sharpening purposes, it can be very tough to keep that same angle the whole way. Uh, in fact, I find many knives have two different angles on each side, and so you never get that perfect angle. And when you're sharpening it, you end up making a micro bevel right here anyway. So you end up having just a, a worst version of a saber grind after you're done sharpening. Um, so that's my, just with that. But what we're talking about today is really this convex. And I'll show you why that's important in a minute. All right, guys. So that's how the bevel kind of works. Uh, again, what we're work talking about uh, today is really just the axes. I'll go into the knives maybe another time. Uh, plus, I think uh, traditionally there's tons of videos out there for people who like sharpening knives. Specifically, I want to just talk, talk about the axes because I don't feel like there's enough uh, videos out there really explaining what's going on. That edge that you're trying to get is curved. It's not a straight edge. Um, and that's important for the function and, and the use of your axe. So when I was researching this stuff, I came across Wrangler Star. He's got a lot of videos out there and real, real good guy, you know, nothing against him. But he put a video out there where he had a device from Russia. I forget the name of it. Um, but it acts primarily the same as my knife uh, sharpening tools here, where you've got a device and it takes an angle and normally I'd have a knife in here, but what he would do is he'd set it up on the table and then take a stone, you know, you fit these stones in here. Um, let's see if, and you get them in these like little packages here. And you, you fit them on there, you close, clamp it down, and then you run the stone across your knife. Well, the thing is, is this is a fixed angle this way, okay? And the point of that is so you can get a flat grind. You can get a really good grind, whatever your, whatever your, um, whatever knife you're working on. But he was using it for his axes, and uh, at first I was trying to figure out uh, if I should do the same thing. And after a while of pondering, I realized it just doesn't quite work for an axe because ultimately you need that convex edge and if you use a device like this you ultimately make it a flat edge and that makes for a sharp axe but it does not make for a very reliant axe it does that edge will break down quite quickly so uh, in the field typically guys will use something like a puck or whatever and so when they're doing their grind it's not perfect anyway but they'll naturally you watch if you watch some of the guys that are real good at it they will naturally make that curve uh, as best as they can. Me, I don't have that skill yet. So I was a little frustrated trying to figure out how to make this work. And ultimately, I'm, I'm glad I did not follow Wrangler Star's um, way of doing it. And my axe setup actually brought me to my knife setup, which is this. So this is from K... Who is it? So this setup's from KME Precision or Sharp Sharpeners Precision Knife Sharpening System, something like that. So um, this is a really cool setup, and it was good for knives. But what was great is I found on their website this guy right here, and this is what this video is really all about. This is their axe sharpening setup, and if you look at this, this actually has a curve to it. So it will choose an angle. This chooses the angle right here. But then as this comes through the angle, it will curve it automatically. And what's excellent about that is that gave me the ability to be as precise as one of these, but still have that convex edge that you need on a knife. Let me show you guys how it works. You put this on. It's got some... Um, some magnets on here and I've got this set up you do need a square back on the back of your axe which most of them do have uh, um, for a lot of reasons but anyway 
So you have that, and then you have this. This holds your stones, okay? And you just put this on here like this, okay? And then this is a little stopper. You can undo and slide this up and down. But as you work this thing back and forth, you can see I've already got mine set from other times, but it's going to work this stone back and forth. And I don't want to go over it. I'd rather be able to just move this back and forth. So, but if you look at this axe, it's really not that bad, badly beaten up. The edge is uh, a little bit beat up, but nothing too bad. I just want to do a little bit of sharpening on it. If this was real, real bad, I would need to do quite a lot of work on it. But uh, because of that, this shouldn't be too long of a video, or at least too much sharpening. But what you do is you have different grinds. Uh, or grits. This is a 50 grit diamond and then I've got a hundred grit diamond and then I get into my ceramics. This is 200. I think this is 350 and then this one's I think a thousand and depending on the grit will uh, depend on how much work as you go across it how much it actually chips away. So if this was all dinged up real bad I would start with the 50 because I would need to repair the edge first. Um, but I don't really need to repair this edge. I need to sharpen this edge. And so when you get into sharpening, you're more uh, well past 50 grit and you're more on to 100 or 200 grit. And then uh, once you get past 350 grits, you're looking at something like this, a uh, 1,000 grits. And these uh, are, this is an Arkansas stone. Um, these have very little grit at all. They're not really doing much. They're almost polishing at that point. And then finally you, you can strap it. This is a strap. I do not strap my axes uh, because these are very finicky. If you, you mess it up you can uh, put a, a, a an abrasion on here and then it won't work for your knives. But I do strap my knives with this. This is like a leather. Um, but there's way more you can get into this. I'm very basic, very simple with this stuff. There's guys who this is all they like doing is sharpening knives. Uh, the problem is those guys don't really get into sharpening axes. And so there's not a lot of videos out there that really give you a good um, run of this. So um, anyway, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to put on the 100 grit just to start off. I'm going to skip over the 50. That's definitely overkill. I actually think the... 100 might even be overkill, but you load it in there just like this. You tighten it down. And what I do is I take a Sharpie um, like this, and I just make sure I mark up this, this edge a little bit because I want to make sure I'm actually hitting it. Um, you know, I'll be able to feel that I'm hitting the top edge, but I want to make sure I'm actually getting to the edge edge. Um, and I've already got this pretty, you'll have to move this up or down depending on if you're actually getting getting this, but once you get it set, it's pretty simple. So now once we have this loaded in, what I like to do is just spray this down a little bit of water. Um, because you're gonna create a lot of heat and friction when you're doing this and diamonds don't um, you don't want to abuse them, so you give them a little bit of water, and that helps to keep them cool while you're while you're working the blade. And what I do is I just start going after it. You go one way. And you can see that this moves around with you, but it keeps the same angle. As you see. As you can see, I have now gotten rid of most of that um, Sharpie. And that's how I know I'm actually hitting this, this edge. And with the diamonds, um, you don't typically need to go too far with them. Unless, you, unless your blade's been really, really destroyed. So I usually do about eight, eight passes or so. And then I, I'll flip it, or five passes, and then I flip it. And do the same thing over here. Go to work. 
I'm hitting a full solid, you know, eighth of an inch of, of blade here. This, this part up here, I'm not too worried about. I don't need it to be perfect to go all the way up here to this original grind. But what you don't want is you don't want to just have just the edge being touched. You really want to work as much of this as you can get. And then the other thing that you're looking at is put your finger under here. I don't know if you can even hear that. But you can feel and see the grind coming off. And when you start to see that, what you're doing is you're, you're taking your, your edge. What that's doing is you're taking this edge and you're bending it. You're pushing it down this way. And then you that's how once you reach that point where it's bent this way, you need to recorrect it, turn it over, and push it that way. And that's how that's how you sharpen. Um, otherwise, if you go too long on this side, you end up just wearing away at this corner. So you don't want to do it too often on one side. You gotta keep switching sides over and over. Otherwise you get an unbalanced uh, edge. Alright, I'm not going to have you guys watch this whole thing um, of me sharpening it, but I'm going to, basically what I'm going to do is now I will change this out to the next size up, 200, 350, all the way up to, and usually I can stop at 350 and have a decent edge, but um, me being me, I'll probably end up, while I'm here, putting the, the 1000 on there, um, just to get a nice clean edge. Uh, once I'm done though, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Alright guys, that's the edge. So now I have a nice sharp clean edge with almost no imperfections on it. Um, and this this will work out real good for my next adventure. Um, and I didn't ruin the edge by flattening it out. So now it'll stay strong like that for, for a lot longer. I find that sharpening this way, I only need to sharpen once a year. Uh, typically it, it holds its edge. Uh, quite quite decently for quite a few adventures so um, I don't bring it on every adventure so that helps with uh, getting a lot of use out of it as well uh, or at least time but uh, for the amount of abuse that this thing goes through and keeps its edge pretty happy with it so all right guys I hope this was helpful to somebody out there I know it's what I would have wanted to see if I was watching a video on how to sharpen an axe kind of give you the uh, the theory first and then give you the practical uh, explanation on how to um, along with some some mishaps that other people have have done so I hope this is helpful to somebody out there and other than that hey I'll be I'll be out for about a week adventure coming up soon uh, it'll probably take a little while to make the video uh, when I do get back but I'm excited for it and uh, stay tuned for for that adventure coming up till next time guys see ya